Forklifts can be an incredible tool for workers, but they can also be a tremendous safety hazard. You'll be introduced to some forklift basics today, including the types of forklifts, the power sources they use, and their parts. Knowing the fronts, backs, ins and outs, upside downs and right side ups of your forklifts is vital to doing your job effectively and most importantly, safely. Let's jump right in. There are seven different classes of powered industrial trucks. Class one, electric motor rider trucks. Class two, electric motor narrow aisle trucks. Class three, electric motor hand trucks or hand rider trucks. Class four, internal combustion engine trucks, with solid cushion tires. Class five, internal combustion engine trucks with pneumatic tires. Class six, electric and internal combustion engine tractors and class seven, rough terrain forklift trucks. As you can see, these classes indicate the type of fuel used by the forklift, as well as how the forklift is used. Now, a quick note about terminology. When we talk about forklift travel functions, we're talking about moving the forklift from one place to another. When we mention hoist functions, we're talking about the actual lifting action. Now let's take a closer look at each class. Class one electric motor rider trucks are powered by industrial batteries and use transistor motor controls for travel and hoist functions. They can have cushion tires, which can be used indoors on smooth floors, or pneumatic tires, which can be used in dry outdoor applications. Class two electric motor narrow aisle trucks are similar to class one trucks, but they have unique features that allow them to minimize the space they take up in order to improve speed and efficiency in tighter spaces. Class three electric motor hand or hand rider trucks are hand controlled by an operator in the front of the truck via a steering tiller. All controls are mounted on the top of the tiller, which is moved side to side to steer. They're powered by smaller capacity industrial batteries. Class four internal combustion engine trucks with cushion tires are used inside on smooth dry floors to transport pallet loads in low clearance applications. Class 5 internal combustion engine trucks with pneumatic tires can be used both inside and outside for just about anything. This series has a large range of capacities, and they're powered by internal combustion engines. Class 6 electric and internal combustion engine tractors are used for hauling heavy or bulky loads and can be used outdoors if they have internal combustion engines or indoors if they are battery powered. And finally, Class 7 rough terrain forklift trucks have large flotation tires for outdoor use on rough surfaces, such as construction sites, lumber yards, and automobile recycling yards. While many of these forklifts share similar parts and operating procedures, it's important to understand the exact machine you'll be operating. It's also essential that you are certified for each class of forklift you are going to use. One of the main differences between types of forklifts is their power source. Most powered industrial trucks use internal combustion or electricity. You might also come across hybrid systems, which use hydrogen fuel cells and take advantage of the benefits of both electric and internal combustion mechanisms. They're still less common than the other two, though. So our focus here today will stay on internal combustion and electric forklifts. Each type of power source has its own set of requirements, so it's important to understand each one. The internal combustion forklifts are the most common type, and they can run on a variety of fuels, including gasoline, diesel fuel, liquid petroleum gas, and compressed natural gas. One of the benefits of internal combustion engines is that they can be quickly refueled. The trade-off is that they require more attention to maintenance, including checking regularly for fuel, more leaks. You'll also need to routinely check the system parts, which are more likely to become worn down and require replacement. On the other hand, Electric forklifts are usually powered by large lead-acid batteries that require routine recharging. One of the major benefits of electric forklifts is that they almost completely eliminate the hazard of carbon monoxide poisoning. They also reduce the hazard of hearing damage for employees, since they're much quieter. Of course, they have their own specific set of hazards as well, including the potential for electrical burns, dangerous fumes, and lifting injuries due to their weight. Operating each type of forklift requires its own set of best practices and attention to avoid hazards. So we'll go over those in other videos to give them the full attention they deserve. The 
The last thing we'll cover are the major parts of the most common types of forklifts. You'll definitely want to read the operator's manual for any forklift you'll be operating, but we'll cover the basics here. The basic parts of a forklift include the mast and carriage, forks, attachments, nameplate, danger warning and caution labels, controls, instruments, battery, overhead guard, tires, and other safety and warning devices. Okay. Let's start with the mast and carriage. The mast is the vertical assembly that does the work of lowering, raising, and tilting the load. The mast supports the carriage, which is moved up and down via a hydraulic lift. There are several types of masts, which are defined by stages of extension the masts offer, and their free lift distance, or how far up the force can go before extending the mast. They include simplex, which has a single stage mast and a limited free lift of four to six feet. Duplex, which has a two stage mast and a greater free lift of 50 to 60 feet. Triplex, which has a three stage mast, the same free lift as duplex, but the ability to extend further. And lastly, quad, which has a four stage mast, the same free lift, but the furthest extension. It does require precaution at its highest lifting heights. The carriage is made of flat metal plates that are attached directly to the hydraulic cylinder or moved along the mast by chains. The hydraulic lift cylinder is the mechanism that supplies the power to lift the load. Keep in mind that the lifting capacity of a forklift decreases the higher it goes. One last thing to remember about the mast is that the configuration can affect your visibility while operating the forklift. Newer models use two side cylinders and offer better visibility. If you're operating an older model with a single central cylinder, you'll need to travel with a low trailing or use a spotter to achieve adequate visibility. Next, we have the forks, also known as tines or blades, which actually carry the load. They have a heel where the fork curves upward, as well as an upright shank that attaches to the carriage. Some powered industrial trucks use attachments instead of traditional forks. Attachments increase versatility, but introduce new safety considerations, such as stability, capacity, and visibility. Some common attachments include slip sheet attachments, which let the operator forego the use of pallets, side shifters, which shift the forks right and left, container handlers for lifting shipping containers, carton clamps, which have a pressure valve to squeeze the load, cotton, or pulp bale clamps that grab and hold bales, paper roll handlers, barrel clamps, rotators that grasp and rotate a load, telescoping of extending forks, and personnel platforms designed for lifting people. Proper training is necessary for appropriate and safe use of attachments, so make sure you read any manuals for attachments you're going to use and request training if necessary. Next, we have the nameplate, which is a corrosive-resistant, durable label that includes truck specifications. All forklift operators are required to know where the nameplate is, what's on it, and what those specifications mean. Additionally, if the forklift has a special attachment, it must be listed on the nameplate. Remember, never operate a truck with an illegible or missing nameplate. Forklifts should also have other appropriate danger, warning, and caution labels, or decals, that provide safety information for you, the operator. There are three main types. Danger indicates that if the danger is not avoided, it will cause death or serious injury. Warning indicates that if the warning is not heeded, it can cause death or serious injury. And caution means that if the appropriate precautions are not taken, minor or moderate injury may occur. Of course, to operate a forklift, you'll need to understand the controls. Study the operator's manual for your specific forklift then locate the controls and learn how to use them. The main four are forward and reverse directional controls, hydraulic lift controls, pedals for accelerating and braking, and the parking brake. Along with the controls, you'll want to become familiar with your forklift's instruments located on the dashboard, which most likely include the instrument panel, oil pressure gauge, temperature gauge or light, transmission temperature, fuel gauge, hour gauge, hour meter, and battery discharge indicator. If you're using an electric forklift, you'll also need to learn about the battery. Typical parts of an industrial battery include 
the cells, the separator, electrolyte solution, and the element, or the positive and negative terminal at the top of each cell. On any type of forklift, you'll also likely have an overhead guard, which protects the operator from falling objects. Next, tires are a relatively self-explanatory part of the forklift. Common types include pneumatic, solid, and polyurethane. The tires on your forklift determine the applications in which it can be used, such as indoor or outdoor, wet or dry, and smooth or rough terrain. Lastly, become familiar with any other warning and safety devices on your forklift, such as seat belts and similar restraints, horns, backup alarms for when the forklift reverses, fire extinguishers, warning lights, directional signals, brake lights, and mirrors. That's it for now. We've covered a lot, but it's all vital information to understanding how to do your job effectively and safely. For more details, you can visit OSHA's website.